feeling slightly faint, Sarah. You'll feel better in a minute. Okay. Learning how to make quick decisions during childbirth can make the difference between life and death. Sorry, Sarah, you're going to be absolutely fine. Simmom is the latest innovation in maternal simulation. It combines computer technology with anatomical accuracy to reproduce realistic scenarios. There you go, perfect. Certainly in the UK, up to 50% of poor outcomes after delivery are thought to be avoidable with best possible care. And there seem to be common themes for errors yeah, made in all emergencies, particularly during pregnancy. There was a failure to recognise the problem, a failure to respond appropriately to that problem, and a failure to refer to the right level of medical staff. We have a core prolapse here. Cathy, can you call some help, please? Simulation is really useful because although obstetric emergencies happen, they also happen rarely. And therefore, the only way to be practised in treating them is to actually train on a regular basis. OK, I'll That's go and it. get the doctors. Simmom is a highly versatile simulator and its integrated computer software includes 10 different birthing scenarios, from normal deliveries to obstetric emergencies. For the first time, we've got a combined model which incorporates all the elements that we've had in an anaesthetic model of being able to simulate a difficult intubation combined with the obstetric modalities of postpartum hemorrhage, retained products, etc. So we can incorporate the whole team. OK, so we're just going to turn you onto your left-hand side. Becky, if you could get the pillow out for me, please. With the team at Southmead Hospital, we have recreated three possible scenarios to illustrate Simmom's versatility and innovations. Postpartum hemorrhage, so bleeding after delivery uh, of the baby, is a really, really important condition. Important both in the UK and also probably the, the number one killer of mothers uh, across the world. Well done there. There's a lovely baby there. Now then, we've just got to deliver the placenta now, OK? It can be dangerous, can be difficult to manage, and therefore using simulation can really provide a platform to, again, to streamline our care and improve our management to get the best possible outcomes. There's a little bit of blood loss here. Just have a little feel inside. In the past, when we've simulated postpartum hemorrhage drills, we've used sort of blood-stained sheets um, to give the impression that she's losing blood. And I think the difference with this mannequin is as soon as you see the blood actually trickling out quite profusely, that does give you that anxious feeling as you would feel in real life. Ruth, we've got a bit of a hemorrhage here. Could you call for help, please? Oh, right. We're OK, no problem. Heavily. I'm just going to rub on your tummy, Sarah, because you're just help, please? bleeding a little bit down below. Sarah. Okay. She's having a normal delivery yeah. and she's having a PPH following delivery of the placenta. When your help arrives, it's very important that you state the problem straight away. So you need to clearly state that this is a postpartum hemorrhage so that everybody knows what the problem is. So we've got a postpartum hemorrhage. I'll get the PPH box. Can you box. get the PPH box? <coughs> Can you put a line in, take some blood and put some fluids up? Thank you. You need to be rubbing up the uterus and making the uterus contract down. So to actually, on the mannequin, be able to simulate that you're rubbing the uterus and feeling it go hard under your hand is a very useful thing. You're feeling slightly faint, Sarah. You'll feel better in a minute. Yeah. Ruth, we'll go around to the theatre as soon as they're ready. Cathy, okay. if you can keep a note of yeah. everything we've given. From the point of view of an anaesthetist, not only can we practice um, scenarios where we find it difficult to intubate our patient or to ventilate our patient, which are, of course, the nightmare anaesthetic scenarios, but we also get a visual indication of the physiological variables of the patient, their blood pressure, their pulse rate, the oxygen saturation of their blood, which is what we would have in reality for a patient in, in the operating theatre, and that makes the whole situation much more realistic for us. Has she had a dose of Sintimetrin? She's had one dose. So, Ruth, can you give a second dose of Sintimetrin IM, yeah. please? The scenario can be changed on depending on how the team are working with the mannequin, and actually you can change the scenarios to the patient getting better or getting worse, depending on how the team are responding to the emergency. Yes. OK, so I'm just yeah. pressing your tummy. It does oh, yes. feel as if maybe a bit of the placenta hasn't been completely delivered. Simmom can also simulate a retained placenta lobe. This is the first model, I think, where we can actually train people to pass a hand into the uterus and take out the little tiny bit of placenta that's causing all the problems. OK. Got that little tiny bit of placenta. 
that's a really important technique here in the UK, but it's vitally important in the developing world in particular because it's such a easily treated cause of excessive bleeding that causes death so often. Oh, come on, Sarah, you're nearly there come now. On, Another innovation of SimMom is that the mother has fully articulated limbs, so it can be used to replicate a range of birthing positions. Oh, wow, done, and there's your baby. This is also a vital function in our second scenario, called prolapse. Core prolapse is a really, really important emergency in obstetrics where for whatever some reason the cord drops below the baby's head as you know, during the labour itself. Now the main problem is that as the baby's head descends through the birth canal you can imagine okay, you it completely compresses the cord and that stops any kind of oxygen transfer at all. The woman's waters would go and uh, you maybe hear the baby's heart rate decelerate um, if you're monitoring. I'm just going to have a little look down below. Oh, we'll just see what's happening down there, all okay, right? OK, Cathy, we have a cool prolapse. Can you call some help, okay. please? If we couldn't get to theatre straight away, we may fill the woman's bladder. The model that we've used um, for the drill has been particularly good for that because you can actually fill the bladder and that's something we talk about but actually you do need to practice having a go at. Just put this pillow under your hip. We also need to get mums in particular positions that will also help to keep the presenting part off the cord and that's particularly useful to practice because even if you have a home delivery where there was a cord prolapse um, you would need to put the mother into that position to get her into hospital in the ambulance and so it's very good that we can practice on the mannequin with community midwives, um, even paramedics. That's perfect. Lovely. One of the things we always sort of say in obstetrics, and they said in a lot of places, but a team is only as strong as the weakest link. And that's one of the reasons it's really important to train your whole team in your hospital. And that is everybody from your obstetricians to your anaesthetists to your midwives and even your healthcare assistants. Everybody that works with that patient um, must be trained in that prompt sort of emergency response. There we go. Is that SimMom offers the possibility of training in not only technical skills, but also crucial communication skills. Right, now you've still got to do some pushing, Sarah. This is very clear with our third scenario, an instrumental delivery. It's not just pulling the baby out. Part of it is communicating with the mother, communicating with the rest of the family, making sure the whole team know what's happening, as well as the parents, to make it the best experience it can be. Simulation is really useful for this. I don't think any mother would like their baby experimented on uh, and be used to train people who'd never, ever undertaken any procedure like this before. Here we go, Sarah. Maternal simulation training also has very quantifiable benefits reducing risk for both baby and mother. What we've managed to do is reduce the decision to delivery interval, so when someone makes a decision to perform delivery, to when the baby's actually delivered from 23 minutes to 14. So in this department, by using simulation and simulators, we've been able to streamline care, practice what we're trying to do, to get the best possible outcomes for mothers and their babies. SimMom offers healthcare professionals the chance to train for everything from a straightforward delivery to life-threatening obstetric emergencies, helping to ensure a joyful outcome for all births. Oh, look, have a look at that. Oh, there we go. Light up with mum there. 